Did you know that as of January 2022, there are 4.95 billion internet users worldwide, which is equivalent to 62.50% of the global population, you and me included. That's why I know for a fact that you are familiar with CAPTCHAs. After all, anyone who uses the internet would at least come across them at least once or twice. But for the sake of those rare cases and those who are not familiar with them, when a CAPTCHA appears, you must fill out some sort of form in which you must read a distorted series of characters to show that you are human and not a robot. Those are fairly amusing and not at all bothersome, right? Louis Vaughn, you owe it to this guy. CAPTCHA was invented in 2003 as a simple way to deter scammers. It proved to be extremely effective and at one point approximately 200 million CAPTCHAs were appearing every single day. Filling out a CAPTCHA now takes about 10 seconds on average. Multiply it by 200 million and you get around half a million hours every day that humanity wastes doing these vexing things. So, Louis devised another simple idea. What if everyone who writes a CAPTCHA contributes to the digitalization of old books? Computers used to be terrible at recognizing text, especially from old books with washed out pages. So, Lewis refined its initial application and released reCAPTCHA, in which you essentially help a computer transcribe an old book while also proving that you're human. As a result, every website followed this strategy and Google finally acquired his company in 2009 for an unknown sum, but sources indicate it was between $10 million and $100 million. Louis's next venture was also a pretty basic one. He co-founded a free app to help people learn other languages. It's called Duolingo, and at this time, more people in the United States use it than learn a language through the public school system. For those who are curious, Louis Von Ahn is currently worth approximately $700 million. So, why am I telling you this? Well, as you may have noticed, Louis Vaughn's undertakings all have one thing in common. They are ridiculously simple. And today's video will discuss why most highly successful entrepreneurs build simple businesses. Welcome to Thrive Test. If you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button and join our community. And as always guys, give this video a thumbs up for that YouTube algorithm. If you have an idea for a business or a sideline activity, first ask yourself if you can explain it in one sentence. Most individuals struggle here because they either don't know what they're doing or are trying to do far too much. We've all heard people talk about their brilliant business ideas, and they all sound the same. Oh, I'll do the next big thing and I'll do this and that and have this feature and the other feature and everyone will remember my name. But that's not how it goes. Do you know how Virgin Airlines was founded by Richard Branson? So, one day, Branson was scheduled to fly to the British Virgin Islands when his American Airlines flight was abruptly canceled. He returned to the airport depressed by the whole event and inquired if he could rent a plane. The airport happened to have one available, so Branson boarded it, divided the bill with everyone else who had missed their flight that day and arrived in the British Virgin Islands. When he returned, he approached someone at the airport about renting a plane for a whole year. And that is how Virgin Airlines was founded. You might argue that you don't have Richard Branson's fortune and that you can't easily rent a plane if you miss a flight. But that's because you still don't see the point. So let us delve a little deeper. A stupidly simple business has one goal, to provide a simple solution for actual people. The fact that Branson had the resources to make that reality materialize on the spot is irrelevant. The point remains the same. Branson offered the simple solution of flying his rented plane for actual people who had just had their flight canceled. And while we're on the subject of resources, let's talk about execution. Do you have any clue how much a brilliant idea is worth? Approximately 20 bucks. Ideas are simply a multiplier of execution. To make a business a reality, you must multiply ideas with execution. A brilliant idea with no execution is worth $20 per week. A brilliant idea executed brilliantly is worth $10 million. Apple introduced the Apple III, a business-oriented personal computer in 1980. 
Steve Jobs was a firm believer in having the thinnest and quietest hardware in the industry. Their entire aim was to give the best user experience possible through new hardware, software, and services. And it all started with the Apple III. To keep the computer working as quietly as possible, Jobs insisted on having no fans or air vents. Great idea, poor execution. The Apple III operated so hotly that internal components were melting. They were forced to recall the first 14,000 units sold. Although the project was eventually terminated, he retained the idea and refined the execution for future products. Some say that Apple's success is due to its brilliant marketing strategies, but regardless of how you feel about them, this is not the case at all. Let's have a look at something a little different. Imagine Mr. Beast and his burger. He created a chain with a virtual restaurant and began promoting his burger. However, there were no physical stores for this. You can sign up to sell his burger if you own a modest mom and pop shop. You take a class where they teach you how to make it and you order all of the ingredients and packaging from them. You will also be able to keep the majority of the profits. Excellent execution of a brilliant idea. He initially launched a burger in 300 establishments. They were all gone in an instant. The demand is so high that they have to keep opening 50 new restaurants every week just to keep up. Doing some basic math on this, his earnings in the first three months are estimated to be around $8 million. Which gets us to the answer to our question. Simple stupid ideas provide significant competitive advantages. First, starting small encourages you to solve a real problem for actual people. And it follows you to evaluate your product in the market as quickly as possible and receive immediate feedback. Your entire effort is focused on a single goal. How does your simple product benefit the customer immediately? That is the most crucial factor in business. Second, it allows you to turn and enhance your product if what you develop is a failure and no one wants it. You can then make something different in the best way possible and apply what you learn. Similar to the Apple III, even though it was a tremendous failure, the design principle remains unchanged to this day. Third, you don't have a massive infrastructure to hold you back. In Mr. Beast's situation, infrastructure was simply the logistics. It's not easy, but just imagine having to establish a chain of physical restaurants when you're still starting. The cost and effort it would take would be far too much of a hurdle. Lastly, it won't cripple you financially if it doesn't work. A stupidly simple business requires little to no funding. If you believe that you will need a lot of money, investors, and suppliers, among several other things to get your business off the ground, you will fail. Tell this to people and they will condemn you. After all, it's kind of common sense that if you want to have a successful business, you would need a huge capital to start. But I tell you, the world is changing, and the way we do business is also evolving. Entrepreneurs create stupid, simple businesses because they need to do one thing correct first, then grow and expand. If they have lofty plans to establish an industry-changing giant, they don't start there. If the first thing goes well, they'll move on to the next. So, how about it guys? Have you already thought about what kind of stupidly simple business you'd like to undertake? How about thinking what is the most pressing matter that needs to be addressed in today's world? and find a simple solution for that. Please share your ideas in the comment section down below. So far, what we have established is that to have a successful simple business, you need great execution. And to do that, you need to be able to explain what your business does in one sentence, to see that you truly understood what you're doing. And lastly, you shouldn't need a lot of money to start. Let's look at a few examples. Assume you wish to begin constructing a large number of schools. You can start right now by teaching one thing to one person. It's easy, it doesn't cost anything, and you can do it right now. Or suppose you want to establish a new Ubisoft or other studio and produce the games of your dreams. You can start by building a card game with a pen and paper and seeing whether your friends like it. It's simple, it doesn't cost anything, and you can do it right now. Or maybe you want to be a Hollywood director and work with the best actors to bring your ideas to reality. 
you can begin by writing a short piece about how your day has gone thus far and filming it on your phone. It's simple, it doesn't cost anything, and you can do it right now. In short, if you have an idea, ask yourself three questions. Is it simple? Do you need money? And can you start doing it right away? If the answer to all these questions is yes, then start executing. Make something useful or interesting for at least one person today, and you'll be leagues ahead of the competition. Thank you for watching this Thrive-tastic video. So if you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this awesome Thrive-tastic video for you to watch next.